Hey guys, Evan Minto here at the Crunchyroll booth at Acon 27 in Dallas, Texas, and I'm talking to one of my favorite anime voice actors, Kyle Bear. Welcome. Hey, awesome. Good to be here. So Kyle, you were an anime fan and I think a general geek before you were a voice actor. So how did you kind of go from that to voice acting? Well, back in the day, I used to watch things like Speed Racers, Star Blazers, Battle of the Planets when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s. Then Robotech comes along and Voltron and things like that. And fast forward to 95, a little show called Dragon Ball Z. Became a huge fan of that. Fast forward to 2000, I'm uh, working as a DJ at uh, Radio Disney and I hear about auditions at Funimation, who, who owns the rights to that. I go in, try out, and I land uh, Teen Gohan. And then the narrator, next time on Dragon Ball Z. And then some other roles. And then uh, my, my voiceover career kind of spiraled from there. So I quit radio and moved to LA in 2005, been there ever since. In Dragon Ball Z and, and I think some other shows, you play multiple roles. What's it like to sort of balance those different roles within the same show? It's pretty easy for me to, to switch to different voices. I'm, I'm what people refer to as a utility actor. I usually come in for a lot of bit parts and things like that. But we only record one character at a time, so it's not like I have to just be right. multiple personality and totally <laughs> sporadic. We, we, you know, we record on Pro Tools, we watch the video in Japanese for reference, and you know, one character, one line at a time, and then we'll go back to the beginning of the episode if I do another character. So the narrator is obviously the easiest one because there's no lip sync. Speaking of that, do you, do you find it like more freeing to work with uh, something like a narrator where you don't have to deal with lip syncing or is there like something interesting about that restriction? It's cooler to see a character talk on screen, but it's more freeing as a voice actor when uh, the script says MNS, which means mouth not seen or mouth not shown. Right. So something like a narrator, yeah, I have some freedom to maybe add some nuances to the performance or whatever, whereas on camera, if the animation is a certain thing, you can't alter the animation, so we have to alter to it. What are some of your favorite anime series? What stuff do you watch? Well, let's see. Uh, I haven't had a lot of free time, but <laughs> ones that have always been a lot to me, and I even re recommend to friends who don't watch anime, things like Cowboy Bebop, Full Metal Alchemist. And I have friends that will gladly watch that show, and then they're like, ah, I'm not interested in anything else. But that was a great story. It's like, OK, cool. Well, thanks for checking yeah. it out. You've also taken part in some like fan-made web series. You've been in Yu-Gi-Oh!, the Abridged series, and a couple other things. Has that sort of changed the dynamic at all with interacting with fans, that you're so kind of directly involved in fan works? Well, I've always been all over social media and being interactive with the fan base ever since I first got onto Dragon Ball Z back in 2000. When social media started to blow up with Twitter and Facebook, that's when it really started to change. You saw a lot of actors and actresses finally interacting and mingling with, with fans for the first time. A lot of people that have been doing cartoons, for example. People that we looked up to but didn't really go on the convention scene and now they're regulars like, like the folks from Futurama and you know all these other veteran cartoon voice actors and everything like that. And I think that's really made the difference. Social media has changed everything for everybody. When you first read a script, how do you kind of find the, the character you're going to play? Do you kind of go through it a couple times and figure it out, or, or do you kind of get it when you read it the first time? Well, that is kind of a collaborative effort between the actor and the director. A performance or a take that we might say prefer may not end up on the final cut, but that's not our job. You know, right. Our job is to please the director give them the performance that they're looking for, then move on to the next line. What would you say are some of like the most challenging roles you've had to do? Nothing's really challenged me on an intellectual <laughs> level, but and I'm not trying to brag. No, 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 it's not about that. But on a technical level, mm -hmm. anything requiring a lot of screaming, anything you're going to blow out your vocal cords on. So Dragon Ball Z. Well, actually, no, I survived Dragon Ball Z. But any games where I have to scream a lot, like I'm a background soldier in Titanfall, Red Faction, Armageddon, stuff that you don't really hear me in the forefront on. Battlefield from, from last year. I do a ton of screaming. Blows my voice out. I'm sitting there drinking Chinese cough syrup and herbal throat lozenges and lots of hot tea and honey. But yeah, your voice is just like, oh my god, I can't. It sounds like I'm gargling razor blades. Yeah. So speaking of video games, uh, you also are the voice of Ryu in Street Fighter V. So I got to know. Are you into shirtless, bearded Ryu, or you just go classic Ryu when you play Street Fighter? Well, I had a friend give me the uh, the skin with the with the bearded Ryu because I'm a because I'm a completist. I haven't heard him referred to as that. I think I've heard that. I first heard it was Hobo Ryu, <laughs> and I'm like, really? Come on, he's got a beard. Big deal. 
Doesn't make you a hobo, does it? <laughs> also, I was going to ask, you use the Japanese or the English voices when you play Street Fighter? I'm a little biased. I speak <laughs> English, so I like the English cast. That's cool, that's cool. There's some good, some really good performances in there, including Thank yours, you. so yeah. You. Seeing as you, you went from being a fan to working in the industry, like, what's your, what's your favorite part about working in the anime industry now? Well, I mean, not to sound too cheesy, but getting to do something that you love and you're passionate about and making a comfortable living from, it's taken a long time. It's taken most of the decade plus I've been in LA to get really established despite the resume and, and everything, because that's not really what it's about. There's no rhyme or reason to an actor having consistent work. That's like a downside. But once I am in the booth, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. So I, I just love that aspect of it. I love mingling with the fans and making a difference in someone's life, whether it's entertaining them or making them laugh or make them cry or make them come out of a depression slump and, and reevaluate life, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I think last question is, what do you got on the horizon? Any shows you're working on, conventions you're going to soon? Uh, yeah, I'll be at Indie PopCon in Indianapolis. I'll probably be stopping by Anime Expo in LA. Fourth of July weekend, Anime Iowa, the end of July, and everything else I usually promote on social media, on Twitter, and on my Facebook. Thank you so much for talking to us, Kyle. You guys can check out more from Kyle A. Bear on kyleabear.com. That's K Y L E H E B E R T.com. Keep watching right here for more Crunchyroll convention coverage.